my talk is titled The Valley of No Results. Um, business lessons, maybe life lessons, if I get preachy enough, um, <laughs> from analyzing pizza delivery data. Um, and so, no, my talk is not over. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to thank you all for coming here. Uh, you might leave um, after a few slides, so I wanted to thank you for at least showing up for the beginning. Um, and that's me in the Iron Man suit, metaphorically, um, giving all you love. So here's the table of contents, uh, kind of intro on myself. Uh, we're going to look at the data set, uh, do some statistics, and uh, get insights from no insights, and then do a pitch at the end for all of you to follow me on Twitter, because I have way less Twitter followers than a lot of uh, presenters. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a competition. Um, so All of Me is the name of a jazz standard. Um, so it's just a ref mean, you know, arbitrary reference to that jazz standard, which is a song. Um, so, uh, so my past. Uh, I was born in El Salvador. I grew up uh, poor, quite poor. And I lived a life between first and second gen uh, immigrant. And because I came here as a baby, and I see the life that a lot of second generation immigrants lived, and I don't quite see myself in that. But then I grew up a really sheltered, like I essentially grew up in El Salvador inside my house, sheltered, um, until I went to school and then started learning English. And so uh, living that kind of made me real, um, gives me a perspective on valuing nuance, nuance loss in classification, I believe, or, you know, I'm always. Now I'm always thinking, okay, how does this apply to my career? <laughs> um, I tried music for a bit. I was a music major, specifically a jazz studies trombone performance major. Uh, surprisingly, there's not much um, demand for that major. Nobody told me that you know there's not many jobs for jazz studies, performance, trombone. I don't, I don't remember. Um, and so I finally ended up in business analytics, um, my final major. Uh, that I got a degree in, and I had a B-minus average in computer science classes and a B average in math, and that was me trying my best. So <laughs> it was very hard for me uh, to do these things. And you may be wondering about the picture. To tie back to growing up poor, um, my brother and I made our own Pokemon cards. Um, <laughs> you might be thinking, Oh, is he saying Poisson distribution? No, that, that's just a misspelled poison. Um, <laughs> I didn't know about that uh, when I was little. So we made our own Pokemon cards. We saw a problem, and we made our own solution. Um, it might not be uh, uh, flawless, like my, analy my analysis later on might not be flawless, but I tried my best, and uh, yeah. So... Um, where things are at now. So these are two dogs. This is my dog, Schubert, and that's um, my housemate's dog, Bartok, and they're cuties, and they have nothing to do with this slide. They just, you know, I just show the picture of them wherever I can. Um, well, I guess they, I have them now, so, you know, I guess that's how it relates. So I'm currently a data analyst or a database analyst, uh, depending what time of the day you ask me. And uh, the meat and potatoes of what I do is SQL. And I'll script some things in PowerShell, and when I'm really lucky, I get to script some manual processes in Python. Uh, I live in Boise, Idaho, and which is a bit different than here. And then in the future, uh, I would love to be a data engineer. So if anybody after the talk has book tutorial or video recommendations, I'd be happy to take them. And that's Bartok and Schubert, again, uh, named after classical composers. Um, right after our bath, so they're, they look really cute. And in the future, yeah. So currently I'm working like in the two, I don't know if you've all seen this pyramid before. Uh, the hierarchy of AI needs or AI hierarchy of needs. So I'm currently working like in the middle two sections. Uh, and I'd love to move more towards the bottom two um, in the future. So. I became a data analyst for practical reasons, uh, much in the same way I made those Pokemon cards. This is because I wanted to play. And um, in this, for data analysis or the business analytics degree, I switched bluntly because I wanted to make money. Um, I was a jazz trombone major, and I wanted to have autonomy. I wanted to be able to make more money and uh, support the loved ones in my life. 
being the first one to graduate college and also the first one to work a white collar job, work in an air conditioned room even, um, was a big deal. And so making that money to be able to support the loved ones, uh, my loved ones, was a big deal. And much for the same reason, I started collecting pizza delivery data. I was delivering pizzas, and I wanted to say more about my experience than uh, I hate washing the garlic bottles, because <laughs> they are nasty. <laughs> and so I started collecting uh, uh, pizza delivery data, so a row for each delivery. I collected around, uh, actually, specifically 1,301, uh, or 1,301 rows. Um, and my ex-partner, she's a saint. She obliged me, and she collected data with me. Um, she would get, hand me her slips with a few fields uh, written in, and I would input it all into Excel late at night after we'd finished delivering pizzas. Uh, so I, I wanted to build technical skills. That meant statistics, Python, but at first it meant Excel. Uh, so in Excel, I... Um, was able to make bar charts and like line graphs, and, but there weren't very many obvious insights. I wanted to do more. I wanted to build the technical skills to be able to sell to employers and be like, okay, this is why I'm worth hiring. This is why I'm worth, um, you know, in a business sense, um, being paid this much money. So interviewers, first internship interviews, then full-time uh, interviewers always wanted to know what are the best predictors for tips? Who tips the best? What neighborhoods tip the best? Um, what did you learn? Uh, what two things can a, or what one thing can a driver do to increase their tips? And so my answer always reminded me of this quote. Give me a one-handed economist. All my economists say on the one hand, on the other. And so anybody who's done data analysis knows that data analysis comes with nuance and a lot of gray areas. And it's not so clear answers a lot of time. And so a lot of these interviewers were like Harry Truman here, who would be like, just give me a straight answer. <laughs> How can you increase tips? And so when I finally got a data nerd in front of me who was excited about no, no results like me, that, this is me, Kirby, very excited. And this is me right now, very excited to explain the no results. OK, so a few weeks ago, I went to a conference. and. Um, I met some new friends, and they told me, um, you got to do live coding in your presentation. <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't do live coding. <laughs> and so they said, you got to do live coding. <laughs> and so I said, OK, I want to do live coding, but I'll run code live. Like, I won't actually type it out. Because before, I was going to put uh, like uh, matplotlib uh, graphs on the screen. And I think running it and like expanding it is going to look a lot better. So I'll do that. So all that to say, uh, I'll prove that I can be hardcore and do some live coding. <laughs> OK, so let me pull that up. Uh, I have some SQL queries. If it, by the way, side note, if anybody knows how to connect to a CSV file as a database from Python terminal, uh, get at me after, because <laughs> uh, that would be extremely useful. Um, but for now, I am using QueryStorm, this really awesome, simple tool in which you can query uh, Excel worksheets as their own tables in a database. So let's just look at uh, how much is tipped average for all deliveries. That's 3.39, so not bad. Uh, $3.40 tip for uh, the average tips out of three, uh, 1,300. And if we, never, if we never got a zero tip, it'd be 3.63. So those who do tip actually tip pretty generously. Uh, $3.60 for average tip is pretty high. That's a good night. Um, and let's see, what's this say? Oh, so this is querying the rows in which someone had a negative tip. Uh, <laughs> so this is two rows. Um, I remember the one that was mine. I remember exactly. Um, and the delivery driver, we have one angel and one Sam, my ex-partner. And uh, 13 cents, I remember. I, yeah, OK. <laughs> I won't get into that. Um, and so if we grab the tip, but group by delivery driver, um, we'll see that I had a lower average tip 
Uh, we'll get into that later, some statistical tests. I had a 337, almost 338, and Sam had a 341. Average. And let's look at order amount. Uh, the average order amount was $21.84, uh, which makes sense for, this is Domino's, um, so pizza tends to be pretty cheap uh, for Domino's. People who are buying pizza there are looking for a deal, not, um, not so much for a fine, night of fine dining. And this is a breakdown of deliveries per neighborhood. Uh, so one of the fields I collected was I generalized okay, this, this delivery is from this neighborhood. And so I had 10 neighborhoods. And um, I didn't collect any addresses, though. I threw those away. And yeah, it looks like uh, pretty even, uh, other than the last four, pretty even um, distribution. And then housing type, most uh, deliveries uh, were to houses. Apartments, all-inclusive in trailers, um, and uh, condos and apart actual apartments. Um, I wish I had collected better uh, quality on that, but you know, such is life. And this is a breakdown of um, percentage of orders that were, is it orders? No, tips. Percentage of tips that were paid either in cash or credit. And so it looks like almost 50% of tips were paid in credit and 43, 44% of cash, and then 6% um, of people did not tip, or the two rows, including the two rows that did not, um, that gave a negative tip that actually took money away. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to Python. So I just wanted to look over um, some stuff. So I'm importing the whole universe here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and get our CSV and printing out ahead. And here is our first scatter plot. There it is. I have a mouse. I don't know what I'm not using. So here's a scatter plot of tip amount on order amount. Uh, you can see lots of tips on the $1, $2, $3, $4, uh, $5. I didn't have to list all those out. Um, you can see a lot of tips on the even dollar amounts. And some, uh, some outliers, for sure. I think there's a, a $25 tip that I'm not including in here, and then like a hundred something dollar order that I'm not including. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty simple scatter plot. Uh, there's some more cool visualizations later on. Here's a cooler one, uh, also scatter, but it's also like shaded, so you see where more of the density is. And then histograms on the on the margins, so that's uh, that's cool. Again, you can see the uh, even dollar amounts there uh, as peaks. It kind of looks almost normal. Uh, I mean, not 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 right here, um, but. Both sides look almost normal, and there's almost a suggestion that people would tip negative if it were socially acceptable, like it cuts off at zero. <laughs> um, but here's a much cooler scatter plot. Um, so you see that most uh, orders were around the three dollar, and then eighteen dollars, uh, three dollar tip, eighteen dollar order amount. And let's create a histogram. So here's a histogram of all deliveries. This is what I was talking about. So if this, uh, it, it almost seems to suggest it would continue over here and people would be like, no, nah, I'll keep some of my money um, <laughs> if it were socially acceptable. Um, yeah. And. Here's a histogram of, oops, oh no. I pressed F5 instead of F9. <laughs> so it's running the whole thing right now. <laughs> no, stop. Spoilers, avert your eyes. <laughs> I could press Control C. 
Okay. Whew. F9. Here's the histogram of uh, Sam's deliveries. I think I'm going to zoom through these because they start to get a little bit repetitive. Uh, it's a histogram of mine, a lot more centered around 3 and $4 there, or 2 and 3 I should say. And um, and then here's uh, both histograms. Uh, you can compare the distribution. I think the bin, the bin size is not the same, though. Um, so I, I collected a bit more data than Sam did there. And I have a print. Did it not print? Output. OK. So right here, I was print. Oh, OK. Great. So that's it for the data set overview. Um, now it is time for some statistics. I. There were statistics and there were weak correlations everywhere. Um, I'm not sure I needed to go back to the slides. So um, the first statistical test that I did was a difference of means t-test. And that was to see if there was a difference between my average tip and Sam's average tip. Uh, people always want to say, oh, who gets tipped better? And so you know, a, a two-tailed uh, difference of means t-test was a good way to see if there was a difference at all. Um, and so. Here, I'm um, querying the data, and then I don't think. So first, I, I collect the ingredients, right, for the formula or the statistical test. And first, it was the counts, then the means. And these are, I, I hand-coded it because I didn't know any better. Um, I didn't know very much. I still don't know very much, uh, but I. It was good to hand code it, like look through the textbook and be like, okay, I need the counts, I need the means, I need the standard deviations, variances, and the uh, row by uh, line by line of code, get them, uh, standard deviations, and then degrees of freedom, finally. And so then putting it together, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the difference of means t-test, but you have this numerator and the denominator, and so, um, for the numerator, it's it's pretty simple. Just uh, the um, muse, which is uh, average. <laughs> I'm forgetting <laughs> average. I'm getting a nod. So uh, averages. The difference of averages at the top, and then at the bottom you have the square root, and then some uh, some more math using those same ingredients. And so we get a t statistic from that, which is negative zero point. Uh, it's very tiny. Uh, negative. 0.0 or 0.31. No, I can't zoom in. Uh, and so, yeah, that is a really quote unquote bad uh, t statistic. Uh, so, if we have a, a hypothesis test here, technically I should have done it in the beginning, but uh, we're just printing out the null hypotheses that are, um, that our tips are equal um, and the uh, alternative hypothesis that our tips are different. And um, our significance level is 0 0.05, uh, just because that's how it is, I guess. And here we get our p-value. Uh, with the t-statistic, our p-value is, it's very small here, uh, 0 0.37749. Um, so it def we definitely fail to reject the null hypothesis. Are statistically, we can maybe assume that our tips are the same, uh, even though we saw a four cent difference in the beginning with just the averages. And so, why does this matter? First, we're going to do another statistical test. Uh, let's see. So, if I run a linear regression, just get the parameters. Um, from tip on distance. So th this is a, the next statistical test to see if people tip better or worse as uh, you got further from the store. I recorded uh, distance to the 0.1 mile uh, from using Google Maps. And um, the, this is our parameter. So we have an intercept of $3.02 or $3.03 .03 and a distance uh, 
a coefficient of 15 or almost 16 cents. So presumably you get it, you know, at zero, zero miles, you get uh, $3, three cents tip. And then as you get further and further out, you get a 16 uh, cent increase per mile. And let's take a look at this model. So <laughs> this R squared always makes you laugh. Uh, point, 0 0.01. Uh, so basically, no. <laughs> uh, none of the variance in the data is explained by the model, or almost none. Um, and I knew this data well. And I knew, I knew this, this batch right here. I'm like, I know you guys, or <laughs> gals. Um, and I knew that, that those deliveries were uh, probably from a neighborhood that was tucked away in the foothills. And so if we look at some more summary here, um, technically the, the model is statistically significant, has a p-value of zero. Um, but it's so bad <laughs> that it doesn't matter. Um, and let's see. The not oh, I have to do a forgot one. There we go. So if we look at just the yeah, so I know these deliveries here, and, and I know that they are, or I suspect at least that they are skewing my model. Um, so if I look at the average tip. Um, overall, and then the average tip for those deliveries that are far away, uh, which are greater than five miles, we see an average tip of 339, which we already uh, came across before, and then an average tip for far deliveries, which is 509. Um, so definitely being skewed somehow. So if I filter those out, and I'm filtering them out because they're from a uh, 33 out of 38 of those deliveries are from a neighborhood called Hidden Springs. Hidden Springs is well-to-do. They tip better. They tip an average of $5, um, and that's quite high. Um, and so that's a confounding variable on my model. My amazing model with an R squared of 0 0.01 um, is being um, messed up by these Hidden Spring uh, tippers. So if I remove those... <laughs> I get an awesome R squared, so it's like uh, R squared limbo. How low can you go, right? <laughs> 0. 0.000. So that is to say, it doesn't matter how far away you, um, you deliver, you're going to get tipped the same pretty much. Um, this is a, a statistically insignificant result. Um, awesome. <laughs> and OK, uh, here. So all that to get insights from no insights. Uh, people are going to tip where they're going to tip. Virtually everything was out of the driver's control. Uh, yeah. So for the first uh, statistical test, which is difference of means t test, I want to focus on um, this idea that when I had a bad night, it wasn't. Uh, I learned that maybe it wasn't a reflection of me but rather it was just bad luck. People were going to tip what they're going to tip. And so this information is worth its weight in gold when I am delivering past midnight and I am waking up at 7 for classes and I'm taking, you know, I'm overloading myself. And so getting uh, bad tips, having a bad night can really weigh down on you and really burn you out, uh, which affects performance. I mean, if you want to talk it from a heartless business standpoint, it affects, affected my performance, you know, and then uh, yeah, maybe I get worse tips because I'm not as cheery going up to the door. Uh, yeah, what's... Uh, a quick question. Yeah. Did you look at the... Did you record the amount of time it took from an order coming in until the customer received it? That's normally how I tip. If it's like 20 minutes yeah, late, yeah. it's just going to be less. I, I, I did not uh, because it, the problem with that is because you go with, for multiple deliveries sometimes. Uh, so if you have three tips, you might leave the store at a certain time. But what if you, you know, deliver two and then, and then, then I'd have to collect that. Hey, we, I, we tried to keep it as simple because I had a partner delivering pizzas. I tried to keep it as, sim as simple as possible. 
so I didn't collect data on that. But that would have been good, at least for the single deliveries, to, to record on that. Um, and the second one, despite having an R squared of zero, there was an implicit variable I hadn't discussed, and that's time. So if a driver wanted to maximize their uh, tips, they should just go for deliveries which are close to the store because they're going to get the same average tip no matter how far away they are. And so if they're going close to the store, gas isn't as big of a deal as a lot of people uh, that I've talked to about this uh, seem to think. Time is a much, much bigger deal. If you can go for 10 deliveries as opposed to seven, that means more money at the end of the day. Um, gas isn't as much. Um, and then also if a driver didn't want to optimize for tips but rather wanted to optimize for a re relaxing night, then go for that Hidden Springs far away ride. Get, the, get a big tip, roll down the window, put on the sunglasses, you're good. And so I would say no results are harder to communicate, but totally worth it. And they're worth it really because of this quote by Dizzy Gillespie, uh, who was a jazz trumpeter. And I, I was a jazz studies major. Um, and so, of course, I'm going to quote jazz musician. And he says, uh, it's taken me all my life to learn what not to play. And so this really cuts to it. And um, I think a lot of businesses and people uh, focus on what to do. How do we increase tips? What, what's the one solution? Or maybe what, what are the solutions? What should we do? What are to-do lists? And not so much on what's our not to-do list. Uh, what is a waste of time? Um, and what should we not focus on? Even just emotionally uh, focus on, like me focusing on a bad night. And uh, no results, I argue that no results provide hints of where we shouldn't allocate resources. And this is a bit harder because uh, imagine data analysts or data, um, data scientists uh, being approached by their project, uh, project manager or product manager and the data scientist says, I have good news. The millions of dollars we spent on this project were a total waste and we can stop <laughs> wasting this money and we can increase our prof profitability because there's nothing there, there's no change. Um, and the, I just don't see that happening very much, or I, I don't know, it's hard. It's, it's hard. And so um, I argue that no results can, uh, can provide hints as to, you know, what, what should we not focus on? And so that's my Twitter. Uh, register to vote, y'all. <laughs> and uh, I feel like Shrek right now, like, uh, that was it. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Maybe you're like this guy, doesn't agree. No questions, that's okay. Yeah, well, what's your... Uh... What's your view on tipping now that you realize tipping is not really tied to your performance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, uh, what's my view on tipping now that it's not? Um, I, I would still uh, hustle up to the door. If I were to go tonight to deliver pizzas, I would still do a little jog, you know, put on a little show for the, for the person wait, like, waiting for the pizza and smile um, just because I think it's, it's good to... Might as well. You know, it's a very, very low, low cost thing. Um, and if it increases your tip, great. If it doesn't do anything, you know, shrug. So I, I think, yeah, I would still try. Oh, but you didn't ask that. Um, you asked, what's my view on tips? Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> uh, any other questions? It's okay if no, no questions. Okay, three, two, final call for questions. <laughs> okay, so if anybody has questions, you can ask me later, I know. Okay, thank you very much.